One day, Max was looking at the tank filled with water. From tap, water was coming out of tank and he actually wanted to calculate the time in which the whole tank will be empty. Could you help Max to calculate the time? Do you know what will be helpful here? Bernoulli's equation. Bernoulli's principle was introduced by Swiss mathematician and physicist Daniel Bernoulli, who published it in his book Hydrodynamica in 1738. It can be written like this. It has three forms, which are energy, pressure, and head. Right now, let's focus on pressure form. Well, before we go deeper, if you don't know about the pressure then please check out our video. The first term is static pressure, which is fluid's internal pressure. The second term is dynamic pressure given by the density and velocity of a fluid. And third term is given by elevation or height. Basically, it is due to gravity or potential energy. Essentially, Bernoulli's equation defines energy conservation law for fluid. Bernoulli's equation is derived from certain assumptions. It is applied on inviscid, laminar, steady and incompressible flow. Inviscid means fluid has no viscosity. Viscosity can be thought like friction in flowing fluid but between layers of fluid. Laminar means it is applied along a streamline, which is the path fluid particle follows during flow. Steady means no change in velocity or any other properties of fluid, with respect to time. Incompressible means no change in density, which is true for liquids. For compressible fluid like gas we have to change some terms in the equation. Let us think about the flow reducer, and apply Bernoulli's equation to the streamline shown here. Consider points 1 and 2. We can write the Bernoulli's equation like this. There is not much change in elevation so we can neglect the third term on both sides. From mass conservation law, we can say like whatever mass going in the reducer is coming out of the reducer. And continuity equation is written like this. An area at the second point is less compared to the first point. And from this, we can conclude that the velocity at point 2 is higher compared to the first point. Clubbing this equation into Bernoulli's equation results. We get less pressure on point 2. Here velocity is increasing from 1 to point 2. But at which cost? At the cost of pressure. So we can now say. An increase in the speed of a fluid occurs simultaneously with a decrease in static pressure or a decrease in the fluid's potential energy. This is the statement of Bernoulli's principle. This principle has a variety of applications, one is Max's confusion about the tank. We can solve Max's question by applying Bernoulli's principle. ETs find out the velocity of fluid coming out of the tank. Suppose, the tank is filled with water by a height of 2 meters and a half meter of diameter. Apply Bernoulli's equation at two points like shown here. At both points, pressure is from the atmosphere only so we can cancel out the static pressure on both sides. At point 1, fluid is stationary and we can say the velocity at point 1 is zero. By rearranging all the terms we can find the velocity at point 2, which is this much meters per second. If we know the volume of the tank then and the area of the hole from which water is coming out, then we can calculate the time discharge flow and finally the time by which Max's tank will be empty. Bernoulli's principle is also applied to the Venturi meter, pitot tube, and even on an aircraft wing. On the top of the aerofoil shape wing, the velocity of air is higher compared to the lower side of the wing. And from Bernoulli's principle, 
we can say that pressure on the lower side is higher than on the top side. This mainly helps to fly the airplane. That is all for this video. We hope that you now understood Bernoulli's equation. If you have liked our video then please subscribe to our channel and you can contact us by Instagram, Facebook, or email. Have happy learning!